So welcome everyone to this special meeting of the Easter Ross Area Committee. Um, please note that the meeting will be recorded for archiving for public access via the Council's internet site. Um, the press have been uh, invited to attend. I don't think there's any members at the moment, but they may come into the meeting at some point. Um, can members please ensure that they've activated their cameras and muted their microphones, except when they would like to speak. Um, and if you use the electronic hand to indicate that you would like to speak on any item on the agenda and I'll come to you. I'm not going to go through the full protocol because we really do know um, the procedure now. Um, but if you have any ICT issues, you can put it in the chat um, and we'll, we'll deal with it. One of the, the officers that are in the meeting will take that and deal with it. So first I will move to Fiona, who will take the roll call. Morning, members. Um, Councillor Finlayson. Here. Uh, Councillor Loudon. Present. Councillor Munro. Here, sorry. Uh, Councillor Ryan. Here. Uh, Councillor Robertson, I can see you're here. Um, Councillor Smith. Here. Councillor Wilson, there's apologies. Everybody, thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you, Fiona. Number two is declarations of interest. Do any members have an interest to declare? No, I don't see any hands up. I'm sorry, Fiona, I'm having a, a pretty awful morning with IT issues. Yeah, yes, I, I think I, we all I, are today. Um, I do have um, a declaration of interest. Um, I'm a director of Tain uh, Picture House. Uh, Tain Heritage Trust, who are one of the applicants um, for for the grant uh, the grant scheme. So at that point, um, it, it, it's a financial interest. So at that point, I'll um, remove myself from the from the meeting, uh, mute mute my um, mute my microphone, and switch my camera off, which I seem to have managed to do pretty effectively already. Uh, I can't. I can't get my camera uh, to work on this machine. So I'm also trying my other machine, but it doesn't appear to be working on there either. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll do the best I can, but I'll have to opt out of that item. OK, thank you, Derek. Any other items for declaration? No. OK, so I will move on to item number three on the agenda. Um, which is the reason why we're here today to look at the Highland Coastal Communities Fund and the assessment of applications. This fund is a new fund designed to support economic regeneration and sustainable development around coastal areas in the Highlands. The Easter Ross Area Committee has been awarded £108,107.84 of Crown Estates revenues for distribution over the whole of the Easter Ross area. So we're here today to look at three different recommendations. And the first that we have is to agree whether the area allocation is to be administered as one budget or whether the overall allocation should be split by ward. Um, and I would like to make a proposal that we split it equally per ward and I would seek a seconder for that proposal. I'll second that, Fiona. Thank you, Maxine. Do we have any other proposals? No. OK, so that's fine. We will split that evenly per ward. The second recommendation is to consider all applications presented for funding and agree whether to approve, defer or reject an application. An approval of funding should detail the amount approved and outline any conditions of funding that members wish to attach to the approval and the required technical conditions. A deferral would allow an applicant to resubmit the current application at a future date with updated information. A rejection would mean that the application will not proceed and any future application to the fund should be brought forward initially as a new expression of interest. And then finally today, we hope to agree which application should receive a funding award up to the value of the available area or ward now application. So I would like to propose first that we consider Cromarty Firth Ward um, their applications, um, followed by the Tain and Easter Ross area um, before we then move on to approving them. 
So first of all, I will move over to Fiona Cameron and to Martin Culberston, and they will talk us through the report and the applications that we have. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, members. Good morning. Um, with regards to the applications in front of you for the Cromarty First Ward, it's probably best to just give a quick update first. In that, um, when the paperwork was circulated, we were presenting three applications for the decision today. Um, so, to make members aware, the salt burn application has been uh, withdrawn at this stage by the applicant for further development work. So, they have indicated they would like to come back to a future meeting with a, a revised proposal but they felt they needed some more time to do some of the development work to inform that. Which means that there are now uh, two applications for your consideration in that ward today, one being the Eventon Rail Hall project and the other being the Rugby Club um, Capital project. So I'm quite happy to give a, a brief bit of background. Um, for, I'll probably uh, first of all take the Rugby Club project and then I'll hand over to Martin for the Eventon Rail project. And I think just to make a general point in advance in regards to the um, information that we've given to members to help you with your discussions and deliberations this morning. We've um, undertaken a technical check of all these applications, which is very much an evidence based um, check that we do based on what information applicants give us during the application process. So um, we, could, we can only really judge applications for information we've been given. And secondly, we've undertaken a RAG assessment, which is looking at some of the key criteria for each of the projects and ranking them uh, red, amber or green in all cases. And I think the general point I wanted to make is there, although um, you may see some ambers or red against these RAG assessments, again, that's just very much based on what information we've been given during the application process. Generally, if there's a red or an amber, it might indicate that we've got some concerns or Perhaps there might be some conditions required with the funding. However, all the applications that are presented to you today are technically eligible and members um, have the discretion to, to award funding or not. So with regards to the Rugby Club, Club application, it's, a, as I say, a capital application and it's to install a balcony and balustrade on the, um, the Rugby Club building. So this is phase two of a capital project, phase one of which is just about complete but didn't include the balcony works. I should make members aware that when the original request came in, it was for a lower grant amount of £33,058.24. And um, subsequently, the club asked if they could increase that request to committee on the basis that the quote they had obtained didn't include the balustrade that went along with the balcony. So that's uh, why the request has increased and the request before you today is £48,909. And then briefly, just to refer to the technical assessment of the project, as you can see, mostly it's scored greens, which, as, as you know, you would um, imagine then means there's no particular concerns that we would wish to flag up. Um, the only area where it has scored an amber is against additionality. Um, and I think that's on the basis that the club could continue to fundraise elsewhere and that part of the project could be delivered at a later date. However, the reason for bringing it forward at this stage is because the club is closed at the moment anyway, and they feel that it will reduce the economic impact in the club if they can proceed with this work more quickly. So I, I think that's the, the main points I'd want to make there, and I'm happy to take any questions from members about the project. OK, thank you, Fiona. Um, Maxine. Yeah, thank you, Fiona, um, for that. Um, yeah, I fully support the Rugby Club's, um, what it's doing with its extension. I, I've been and um, seen what's happening. It's very good. And also support Balcony. I'm a bit um, concerned why they didn't include the balustrade when a balcony can't be a balcony without one um, for health and safety reasons. So I do find that a bit strange. However, still quite happy to support them with their original application of 33,000 plus. But, you know, if Saltburn hadn't withdrawn um, their application and, as I understand it, um, will be coming back um, later in the year or next year with a, a larger, um, more community consulted upon um, development plan for Saltburn, then we wouldn't have had any money left in the budget. So um, I'm happy to go with their original application, which is a huge amount of money they're asking us for. It's three quarters of um, our allocation the 33 something 
quite happy to go with that, but really we don't have the money left to give them that extra for the balustrade. Um, unfortunately, they'll have to look elsewhere. Um, with regard to Salpen and Westwood, um, I do support in principle the application. However, there was lots um, of determination to be undertook and um, things to look at, like whether or not land was contaminated, um, whether they'd consulted fully with the, the whole of the community and what else they could include in the application. So what I'd like us to do in the Cromarty Firth Ward is to agree the 33 um, for the rugby club, which is what they originally asked for and what we looked at as local members, but to also um, commute the salt burn amount just now so that we don't allocate it elsewhere. So we kind of ring fence it temporarily uh, for salt burn until they've had time to look at um, a bigger, wider project and consult more with their own community and see what everybody's wanting and um, maybe come back to us in fullness of time, um, you know, maybe for next year. Um, and they might be looking at a little extra funding as well, but that's up to them. So I don't want us to allocate that money from Saltburn at the moment because we did promise it to them um, in principle. And I think as a community, they very rarely come to the council or, or other um, bodies for money. So uh, I'd like to think that we can we can do that. Um, so I'll hand over to my colleagues now. Thank you. OK, thank you, Maxine. Pauline. Yeah, I'm absolutely happy with what Maxine just said. I do think Saltburn, you know, they never ask. It's not, you know, there's a few little things that need fixed, but if we could keep the money for them, I would much prefer to do that just now because it, and it's spreading it more evenly as well throughout the ward rather than one big project, but that's that's my opinion. OK, there's Mike. Yeah, I think yeah. your, your hand's up, not electronic. Yeah, there it is. OK. It is, aye. Aye. No, no, that's fine. OK, go with that. OK. So that's all the Cromarty Firth members are in agreement with Maxine's proposal. So Fiona, you're happy. What's the amount? 33? What's the proper so amount? There the original amount applied for was 33058.24. So just to make members aware, if um, we're making a, a lower offer to a group than what they've requested, we would have, I guess, two assumptions there. One being that that would leave a shortfall in the total project costs. Um, so that would either mean that we would issue this offer as a conditional offer, that the rugby club then would have to find alternative match funding to cover that shortfall or their other option would be to reduce their costs accordingly so they can come in within the, the funding available. So that's something we would go back and discuss with the applicants. And um, just for the sake of clarity, if we issue the award as a, a conditional offer that the rugby club have to find other funding, members might wish to put a time limit on that and ask for a review to be undertaken um, of that approval, or they may wish to just make that an open-ended approval. OK, thank you, Fiona. I have other members to speak. Alistair Rind and then Maxine. Alistair, you're on mute. Yeah, I, I was just wondering, I, I thought Fiona told us that the salt wind application had been withdrawn, but Maxine is asking now for the money to be ring-fenced. Is, is that eligible to happen? Does the money need to be spent in the in this round or can it be put into a pot for future use? Okay, I'll just take Maxine's question or comment as well and then Fiona you could address them. Yeah, um, thanks. It, it, was, um, it was just about the rugby club. I'm happy for them. I don't need it to be a conditional offer. I'm happy for them to seek money elsewhere or to reduce their costs. Clearly, if they can't do that, then they would withdraw their offer if they don't want the balcony. So that would kind of speak for itself. So I'm I'm not needing to put a condition on it. Um, regarding Saltburn, I did take advice first, um, Councillor Rind, um, to check that we could um, keep this fund um, for Saltburn, or indeed not use it at the moment. It's as I said, temporarily we may decide um, not to award it to Saltburn in the fullness of time for whatever reason. Um, but for now, I'm asking that we don't spend it so that Saltburn can um, access it at a future date. Thank you, Maxine. Fiona? Thank you. Yes, just as Councillor Smith has said, the money doesn't have a time limit on which by which it has to be spent or allocated to projects. So 
it's entirely at the area committee's discretion how they would choose to, to distribute that money. So it's entirely appropriate to ring fence it and any application that comes back in would come back to committee for a decision and be judged on its own merits at that time. Okay, Mike, is that a new hand to you about? Yes, yes it is. Uh, further to Fiona's uh, comments there with regard to uh, the rugby club and that, um, am I right in saying, Fiona, that there is a central pot of monies that could be tapped into apart from the allocated money? So if that is the case, could they tap into that central pot to get there? The extra bit. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, there is an amount of, I think, 355,000 that has been ring fenced for a strategic pot, as it was called when uh, Council agreed that. And the intention in the first instance would be that that pot of money is available for any areas where they have exceeded their original allocation but have projects they would wish to put forward. Uh, and to, uh, to date, there hasn't been a decision taken on the process or timescales for accessing that pot of money, but we would be due to take our paper to the e &I committee in May to have that agreed. So um, that would be certainly one option for the rugby club, and it's probably worth reminding members as well that this funding is intended to be an annual allocation. Uh, we haven't had confirmation of it this year yet, but we would usually expect that to happen around October and for your area committee to be given a further award at this time. So within the coastal communities funding itself, there would be a couple of options for the rugby club. And uh, further to that, yes, they would have the opportunity to go and explore other funding options. Well, thank you for that, Fiona. I don't see why they couldn't uh, just go along those lines. And, uh, you know, the money's there. It's, it's not... 100% their fault at the Balfour Street's not there and, and therefore, you know, it was obviously a mistake in some way, somewhere along the line. And um, if it doesn't affect our, our uh, allocation, then I don't know, would my colleagues agree to that? And Fiona, would you put that in the letter to them that make them aware of this fund? And, and well, obviously they can't apply at the moment, but give them the details about it. Yes, I can absolutely do that. It's probably worth mentioning as well that given the fact that the request from the rugby club increased quite late in the day, I did go back to them and ask uh, broadly what the impacts would be of making a lower offer. And one of the things they made me aware of is at this stage they are still seeking other quotes for the work and they are also looking to reduce some of the other cost headings in the application at the moment, namely the professional fees and the preliminaries. So there is scope that those overall project costs could still come down. And yes, absolutely, I can make them aware that we're looking to have agreement in May as to how the strategic pot can be managed. And we can certainly contact them again at that time if, if that's going to be possible. OK, thank you. Maxine. Yeah, um, thank you, Fiona. Yeah, I think that Mike, Mike makes um, a good point. It's not yet decided on the, the protocols and criteria for that pot. But I think that, you know, we can agree here today, the three Crumb to Firth members will certainly support by the rugby club applying um, for that extra amount to that. So, you know, if they want a letter of comfort or whatever, you know, we'll probably get asked for our opinion in due course. Um, I'm happy to to give that. Um, it's not that I don't support the project. It's just that we've got a very small amount of money and, you know, we can't give it all to one project. Um, and we haven't even heard from Martin yet about, um, the, you know, the money we want to give to Edmonton too. So, yeah, um, I'd be happy with that. OK. Thank you, Maxine. So just to sum that up, we're having no conditions attached to the application to the rugby club. Um, we're going to point them to the strategic fund um, and demonstrate, tell them how they can apply to that um, and members support them applying to that. And if necessary, we can demonstrate that support at some point um, and that we would like to ring fence the funding for the Saltburn application in the future. OK. So now we can move on to the Eventon application, Martin. OK, thank you, Chair. Um, this is an application from Hightrans for £5,000 towards a technical uh, and feasibility study uh, into the reopening of Eventon Rail Station. Um, the original expression of interest that came to members was actually for 10,000 and there was some feedback from members that they should try and seek some additional match funding from elsewhere, which they have successfully done. 
And so the final request today before you is for £5,000. Um, it's essentially to look at the impact on the current real time table, any increased capacity that may be required as a result of any potential reopening of the station. Um, the study will look at journey times versus current public transport provision. Um, it will look at the impact on signalling requirements and uh, timetables both now and in the future. There's also an element in it for local consultation, um, looking at uh, local um, residents' travel requirements and any accessibility issues um, for the uh, potentially reopened station. Um, in terms of the RAG assessment, um, I gave this green across the board. I thought um, it was a very strong application and for the relatively low amount requested, um, the potential end result would, uh, would represent a very good uh, investment for the local community if indeed it can facilitate the reopening of the station. Um, just some um, headline points from my RAG assessment in terms of project robustness. Um, I think it's very strong. There's an experienced team behind the application. Uh, a full match package is in place. The application demonstrates both clear local support for the principle of the station reopening, and it shows a clear need. This technical study is very much required to inform what's called a case for change um, report, which is essential to uh, build the case for any uh, station reopening with Network Rail. Um, the application used a lot of evidence from a survey back in 2017 that was undertaken, quite a detailed survey, and that showed uh, very strong support for a potential reopening and good levels of potential use for the station were it to reopen. Um, there was also clear evidence of um, ongoing um, involvement and updating of the council over a number of years about the, the uh, need for this project. Um, in terms of the legacy, as I said, very strong potential legacy if indeed it does facilitate a station reopening. Um, it's the last piece of the package required and the £5,000 does boost the overall study. Um, it allows them to do community consultation as well as the technical aspect of it, which I think is very important. And in the course of the application, um, not in the form itself, but in further emails between myself and the applicant, they gave examples of other studies elsewhere, um, which were considerably more expensive than this. So there's um, a good level of reassurance that the sums involved are reasonable, and the grant request is indeed at the, the very low end of, uh, of the spectrum for the community uh, Coastal Communities Fund. Happy to take members' uh, questions, but as I say, my view was it was a very robust and, and good application. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, it's great to see this very strong proposal coming forward. Um, I know I have um, worked with Mike Finlayson um, over a number of years to try and bring forward the, the reopening of the station. Um, I've gone with him to the site to have a look at the site, to meet local people. And I know that there's very, very strong support for this. Um, and Mike has worked really hard um, continually pushing for this. So it's great to see it come forward and it's such a strong application. Um, so I, I think we'll, we'll get great support for this. But I'll move first to Mike, then Pauline, then Maxine. Yes, I, I support uh, everything that Martin has said there. Uh, and going back to the original survey, nearly half the population of the of the Everton area supported it uh, and uh, said they would use it. So it, it was uh, informal, but it was uh, worthwhile noting. And uh, so I thank you for your comments, Martin. And uh, I look for I would support this uh, application. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Pauline. Yeah, absolutely. I was just I was going to actually say the same as what you said, Fiona. Really, how much Mike has worked on it to his credit. So yeah, absolutely support it. hundred percent. Thank you, Maxine. I'm um, yeah agreed. I'm um, actually you know for for, men, for people watching um <clears throat> Mike and our former um, colleague Councillor Martin Rattray have been working on this for eight years in fact um and it's taken a long time to actually find any kind of funding pots that you know can be started to apply for so finally getting there with the bits of funding that are coming through well done yeah it is it's a great strong project and I'm, I'm really pleased that we can um help move it along so we've got approval from everyone here for that project so we can move forward and award that funding. 
So that's the end of the Cromarty Firth Ward applications. Um, so Fiona, if we could move on to Tain and Easter Ross now. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll uh, go to the, the application from Seaboard Memorial Hall first, um, which is an application for uh, £23,980 uh, to the Coastal Communities Fund. And the, the project is around um, renovating the toilet block in Ballantour, which the Seaboard Memorial Hall have the responsibility for at the moment. So the uh, existing toilets that they have at the harbour there are, are not in a very good state of repair and so what the group would like to do is use the, ex the footprint of the existing toilets to um, redo the layout essentially which would ensure that there's provision for dis disabled access which currently there is none. It would al allow for a baby changing area, it would replace the sanitary fittings, the water tank and as I said redesign the layout. Um, the the uh, application was very comprehensive and showed a great deal of support. It's clear that the benefits of this project would be felt by visitors to the area, to people living locally in the area and to the number of people um, who use the harbour, the fishermen and so on. And it's also clear that without the Coastal Communities funding, the project wouldn't uh, proceed at this stage. I did give it green on all the RAG status categories. I had no concerns about the project at all. I think the only point I would make um, with regards to that is that although it does look like there is a high percentage of grant being requested, there's quite a significant amount of in-kind support that hasn't been counted in the total project costs. So the administration of the project, for example, will be done by the existing Seaboard Memorial Hall staff um, as an in-kind contribution. And then once the, the block is open again, there'll be further volunteer effort in the maintenance and the ongoing land um, sorry, maintenance for the block and the ongoing cleaning requirements and so on. So I don't have any other particular points to make about this project, except it was a, a very straightforward and good application and seems a very robust proposal. I'm happy to take any questions from members. Thank you, Fiona. Um, I think, as you say, the Seaboard Hall are a very um, enthusiastic, hardworking and very organised group. Every project that they undertake is, is hugely successful. Um, they're very professional in, in all that they do and they're great at raising funds and, and making sure projects do actually happen and, and that they're sustainable. So I'm not surprised that this is a really strong application. Um, I know they've been wanting to do this project for, for a long time. Um, the difference it will make to the community, but particularly to tourists, um, and we're expecting a lot of tourists this year. Um, so uh, this will make a big difference. It's very timely. Um, this funding, um, so I fully support it um, and I'm glad that we, we can help them. I don't have any other hands up, but I know sometimes the hands are not working on teams. So um, if Derek or Alistair have anything they want to add, um, they can do. Just agree what you said, Fiona. Thank you. OK, thanks, Alistair. OK, so we will approve that project, Fiona. Thank you. Next one. OK, thank you. Um, I'll take the uh, Tain Picture House project next um, and then hand over to Martin for the, the Inverbee seating project. So the Tain Picture House project, I'm sure members will be aware of. Um, there's a much wider development being undertaken there, which I think has been planned and in progress for some time now. Specifically, the application in front of you today is for uh, £26,073 and it is um, to install a platform lift in the building, which, as you can imagine, would make a huge difference. Uh, with regards to the RAG assessment I've undertaken on the project, I think there's three areas where the project's been given an amber rating. And what I would say about that is that very much reflects the fact that this is a phased project. So what you're looking at is not the whole um, project itself. So for example, with the legacy and exit strategy, I've only been able to score an amber because the next phase of the development will require the group to identify ongoing funding and uh, larger capital funds to take that forward. They, however, do have very credible plans for this and they have secured some money towards this already. So again, not particularly um, raising a concern here, just explaining where the amber rating comes from. I think similar um, issues with the value for money and additionality and why it scored a number. Again, um, as a standalone project, you may look at this as a high 
percentage of uh, coastal communities funding against total costs. But when you take it in the context of the overall development that's being undertaken, it's clear that this is a very small project in, in terms of the wider development. And likewise with additionality, they do have other funding secured at the moment, and it could be argued that that funding could be used to deliver this, but that would then leave um, a, a bigger shortfall to fundraise for, for the ongoing capital project. So again, I have no concerns about additionality or the fact that this funding is required for the project to go forward and that it would make a huge difference to the, to the project as a whole. So that, that's really just to explain the RAG status, but as I say, I have no concerns to raise and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Fiona, and thank you. That's a very thorough explanation. And I think you preempted any questions that anyone would have um, and explained why you've gone down certain routes um, and why your, your RAG assessment is as it is. Um, obviously, the group do need to install a lift. It is absolutely essential to the project moving forward. Um, so again, it is a good application and it is a good use of the, the funds. Um, I, if any member, well, I know that Derek has ex, um, expressed an interest in this. Alistair, would you like to make any comment? No, I'm just happy to support. Thank you. OK, thank you. There's no other comments, Fiona, so we're happy to support this application as well. Thank you. Do you want to move on to the next one, Martin? You're going to deal with the Inver one. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, very straightforward and um, small scale application. I think if anything, members may feel have been a little bit harsh with the number of ambers in it. It was just very marginal, um, small points, nothing to technically prevent members approval should they wish. Um, it's essentially for the replacement of uh, five benches along a, a, along a coastal path. Um, the previous benches were um, very badly damaged and had to be removed, and so this is a, a complete replacement. Um, the benches are from recycled uh, plastic. Um, in the application that was circled, there was actually a link um, if members had uh, wished to see what they're looking to install. Um, they look quite robust benches and they're um, obviously with being plastic resistant to the, the salt air, which was a problem with the damage to the uh, previous benches and tables that were there. The only um, elements that were of marginal, um, I don't think concern is even the right word, just marginally pushed them into the amber status, was that it does depend on some in-kind support that uh, just remains to be finalised. The community council sort of indicate that they've no, they've no real concerns about getting that, and I, I think that's a fair, a fair comment. I think they, they will be able to get that. And perhaps a little bit of supporting information um, about um, the local community support for these benches uh, might have been welcome just to tip them into the green category overall. But again, I'm sure members uh, will be local members will be aware of the project and um, nothing really further to add, as I say, very straightforward um, purpose and request. The only thing I would note is the grant request is technically below the minimum grant request of £5,000. So if members were minded to support, we maybe would just want to note for the record that you were content to support a, a smaller request than 5k. Uh, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, as you say, local members are aware of the, the project um, and of the Community Council taking it forward. Um, I certainly think it's a great project and I know that there's a definite need for it. I, I know the state of the current benches um, and the work that's gone into producing this. Um, I'm quite happy to support the, the lower amount of 4,000. Um, I think all other members would be in agreement with that. Um, I don't know if there's any more comments that anyone would like to make in support of the application. Yeah, happy to support. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. OK, Martin, so we will approve that project as well. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of oh, Maxine. Yeah, I want to catch you before you close the meeting. Um, yeah, just I know we don't have any other business, but it's obviously about this. Um, could members consider um, maybe putting a letter or something to the leader of the council just to say that we're not happy with the way the allocations um, were spread out throughout Highland, you know, given, I mean, I actually couldn't attend that meeting. Um, I was ill, sadly, so I couldn't even speak at it. But when it was decided at full council or committee that, you know, what the criteria would be, I mean, Cromarty Firth and Tainley Ross fell short, you know, compared to the other areas up north. Um, 
and you know as this is about the seabed I, I find that really annoying when we're sitting in the chromatic firth looking at oil rigs and you know whatever other disruption come with cruise liners so I do think that maybe as an area committee we could write to the leader of the council and ask for that debate to be reopened I'm um, considering putting some kind of criteria in there that talks about nuisance and you know that kind of thing that comes from the sea because we certainly do have that kind of thing and if I could just also indulge your patience could I ask the Cromchy Firth members just to stay behind to discuss play parks at the end of this meeting thank you <laughs> okay thank you Maxine um yes you make a, a really good point I was at that meeting um myself and councillor Derek Loudon um spoke at length at that meeting um, we tried really hard um, to persuade other members to, to see um, the value um, and the fairness, the fairness really in, in changing that allocation. Unfortunately, we were outvoted um, considerably um, and, and it went through as it did. Um, I continue to feel that it's, it's hugely unfair um, and I have raised it myself. Um, independent group meetings, administration meetings, and with the leader of the council. Um, but you're quite right, as an area committee, we could put that in writing um, and ask for the debate to be reopened um, and give our reasons why we feel it is unfair. And I'll certainly arrange to, to do that. Um, Mike, you have your hand up. Yeah, I think it's I think it's good that we do this. Uh, I too was at the meeting and spoke yeah. strongly. <laughs> Uh, in favour of the Community First Ward area, and Derek was there, and uh, I know he spoke strongly in favour of it too. And when you, as Maxine say, when you look out and you see the oil rigs and the, the income that's coming into the war, into the whole area because of Community First, I think that was the point we were trying to make. Uh, then it's uh, shuffled. I don't mind if people get the other wards getting other places getting money. There's no no doubt about that. But it did seem to be a bit unbalanced or. Uh, not totally 100% fair. So, yeah, I think I'll let everyone be good. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mike. Derek? Uh, I think I'm allowed to uh, to speak again now. I think it's, uh, the last item was uh, pretty much done. Um, yes, uh, as, as the others recall, uh, I remember that meeting uh, very, um, very clearly. Um, I remember... Uh, uh, Councillor Callum Munro, I think, was uh, was uh, nearly in tears. Uh, I'd I'd moved him, I'd moved him so much, but but he over he overcame his uh, emotional distress and managed to vote in his own self interest. So uh, I, I I recall that meeting fairly uh, fairly fairly well. Um, I think maybe one of the things we could do is um, uh, when when writing is is refer to the uh, strategic fund. Um, and see whether, um, if if there isn't a way of revisiting this, um, maybe the strategic fund could be looked at as a balancing mechanism, where clearly it has been unfair um, to uh, Easter Ross and Cromarty Firth. Um, I, I, I think I think that's maybe one mechanism by which the the council could address this. Thank you, Derek. Yep, I'm happy to include that in the letter. Um, I think you're right. I think there must have been a lot of tears. I know I certainly felt like crying during and after that meeting. Um, so, yep, I will include all the points that you've raised um, and I'll write to the leader of the council. OK, any other members wish to, to speak? No, so that brings us to the end of the meeting. Thank you, everyone, for attending um, and for all your comments. Um, and thank you. It's a nice, straightforward meeting, and and it's a delight really to to award funding to both of our wards, and know that we've got really worthwhile projects that can now move ahead. Um, so it's a, it's a good meeting. Thank you. Thank you to the officers as well for all the hard work that you've done, and and for coming along to the meeting.